A film by RKSS. I don't know what that means, but I guess that's a pseudonym of the people who made it. Anyway, I wasn't going to review this movie, but then someone I trust said it was pretty good, so here we are. To me, it just looked like a movie made to cash in on the whole 80s nostalgia. You know, the thing that's going on with shows like Stranger Things, because synth scores and arcades are cool again, I guess. And that's how this movie starts with a typical 80s synth score. The story is about four teenage boys and the main kid who's really into conspiracy theories. Of course, he gets obsessed with this crazy idea and shenanigans ensue. Now, I've always had a bit of a problem with this premise of kids or teens doing stuff like investigating crime. As a kid, you can relate to it, but as an adult, you really have to suspend your disbelief. I don't know, it just comes off as sort of silly, but if it's done well enough, you can get away with it. And I think the key is to embrace that and make it kind of silly and fun, not too serious. And for the most part, they did that. It worked. By the way, I don't think I've seen any of the actors in anything before, except the cop. He's from Mad Men, and most of them were good. Nothing special, but they did a good job. The movie actually looked a lot better and more expensive than I'd expected. They put some thought into the set design and all of that. I appreciate that. I feel like they probably tried to cram a little bit too much stuff into each frame to really sell the era. But how can you be mad at a filmmaker who takes the time to put a Polybius machine in the arcade? But they did really cram in a few too many pop culture references into basically every scene with the kids. It was just Ewoks, this, Wookiees, that. We get it, your nerds, and it's the 80s. However, at the same time, the movie did seem pretty self-aware about all the cliches and tropes, so I couldn't really be that mad. But it's very clear that it's playing to a certain audience that seems to want as many references as possible. A bit overkill for me, but it still didn't bother me that much. As far as the narrative goes, this thing is very straightforward. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. Because it's so linear, I can't really talk about the plot at all without giving away something. And I tried, I mean really tried, to come up with a way to phrase it to be as vague as possible. I thought of a dozen different ways to say it, but even the most vague phrasing sort of gives everything away. So I'm not going to say anything other than I was left a bit disappointed by the plot. For the most part though, I like the movie fine. The writing is decent, the direction is good, there's a few details in there that I really loved. There's a very subtle piece of foreshadowing toward the end that I really liked. That was great. But there's also a slight issue with the timeline near the end. Something that should have taken them no more than 10 minutes. Apparently it took them at least 30 minutes. And that's being generous. Basically everything pointed to it taking like an hour or more even. And there's no reason why it would have taken them more than like 10 minutes. That just felt like lazy filmmaking to me. Unless I missed something, but I don't think so. And then we get to the last 15 minutes or so, and they decide to completely shift tone for some reason. The entire movie up until that point had a very consistent tone. It was sort of light-hearted, fun, kind of silly movie, with some darker undertones and some typical PG-13 horror suspense stuff. No on-screen violence, I don't think. No real nudity, unless they slipped in a boob in a magazine cover or something. There's a bunch of creative cursing and sex talk, but pretty tame in general. But then it decides it wants to be some sort of R-rated slasher movie. And it didn't make any sense at all. I don't mind that stuff, but it just didn't belong in this movie. It didn't fit in. I actually sort of liked the end, in a way. Not as a whole, but it had some good parts to it. But it felt like it was pulled from a completely different movie. I'm kind of baffled that's what they decided to go with for an ending. I mean, no one watched the whole thing through and noticed how jarring the shift in tone was. This thing has two credited writers and three directors, and they all thought it was fine. Not to mention the editors and everyone else. It's kind of fascinating to me. As a whole though, the movie was fine. Entertaining for the most part. And with an alternative ending, I'd even say good. But the thing is though, after seeing the whole movie, I'm not really sure who it's actually aimed at. 
because the teen protagonist would suggest aimed at teens, right? But it's obviously cashing in on nostalgia. But people who grew up in the 80s are even older than me. And if it's aimed at 40 year olds, why is it so tame? I honestly think they should have made the kids a few years younger, like 12. Cut out some of the darker stuff and you'd have a fantastic kids movie. Or they could have ramped it up a notch, raised the stakes, put in some more gore and had a more mature movie. Right now it's sort of somewhere in the middle and the radical shift in tone just muddies the water. I don't know. It's a bit of an odd one for sure, especially target audience wise. Would I recommend it though? I'm sure. Why not? It's fine. Just don't expect to have your mind blown. So go watch it. Or don't. I'm not your dad.